Hey guys, it's Kelly from fitnessblender.com and today I have a low impact cardio workout for you. This workout is beginner friendly and it's also a great workout for those days in between your more intense workouts. So it makes a good recovery or rest day workout as well. You won't need any equipment at all for this. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so our warm up is built into this routine. So we're gonna start off nice and light with just a simple march in place. So you are going just as slow or as fast as you need to, bringing your knees up as high or as low as you can. So the most important thing that I want you to know about this routine is that it's, it's meant for beginners, but all of us have a different starting place. Some of us that can lift enormous amounts of weight can't touch our toes and vice versa. So there's so many different kinds of fitness and all of our starting places are different. So the thing you need to remember is just to respect your own starting place, listen to your body and continually keep moving. So if you come across something that you feel uncomfortable with, just start marching in place, just keep moving until you come into an exercise where you feel comfortable to jump back in. Just make sure that you're constantly challenging yourself, constantly uh, making sure that you're moving uh, with as much depth and range of motion as you can and as quickly as you can while keeping that form clean. So next up, we're gonna be doing a butt kicker row. So equally light here. But this time, we're gonna be pulling towards our chest squeezing those shoulder blades together and bringing your foot up to kick yourself in the butt. So you can pick up the pace here if you like. Just getting our muscles warmed up. So like I said, don't be afraid to modify and don't judge yourself. You are moving and that is what counts. So make sure that you're not holding your breath at any point through this whole routine. Focus on pulling your belly button in towards your core, keeping your muscles nice and tight, keeping good posture. All right, under 10 seconds left here. So some of these moves also require a little coordination. So if you feel uh, awkward, don't feel bad. That is part of the point. We're teaching our bodies to move while we're boosting our endurance here. So next up, we're doing a twist plus a reach plus a knee up raise. So it's worse than it sounds. So start in the front. You're opening up, stretch a little bit. When you come here, go overhead and knee up. So if you, if you don't have very good balance, just do what you can. You can just do a little knee up or you can cut it all together if you have to. So this is part stretch, part cardio here. To be honest, this is the kind of workout that I love to do in front of the TV because it's nice and light and if I sit for too long, my whole body just starts to ache. So if I'm kind of doing a little bit of a TV binge because it happens around here, then I like to get up and move a little bit so I don't start to get too uh, stiff and achy. All right, next up we have arm swing steps. So we're gonna be going just stepping out from this center position and we'll be pushing our arms open at a different incremental uh, place for each step. So starting here, step to the other side. So if you notice my hands are going up a little bit further each time. So it actually feels really good. It feels really good on stiff muscles. And then you're going back down. So like I said, just incrementally. It doesn't have to look like what I'm doing. Do it your own way. If you want to step up the challenge, you can start moving faster. You can also start making this a little bit of a squat. It's all up to you. Got about 10 seconds left. All right, so. Our next exercise is gonna be a lateral pull down plus a reverse step. So even during these active periods, keep your feet moving, at least a march in place. So a lateral step, sorry, a lateral pull down plus a reverse step. So you're coming here, pull back, down in towards yourself. As you switch, alternate those feet out behind you. So it can be as simple as a step. I'm just stepping behind myself. Or if you want to make it harder, you can start to go lower. You can go into a full lunge if you like. Do what you need to to challenge yourself. If you're going all the way down to that lunge, make sure that you're keeping your body right between those two feet, your back nice and flat, head up. But just do what you need to. This arm movement, squeeze those arms. You can work against yourself, antagonistic work here, where you really get a pretty good muscle burn without any weights at all. All right. Next up, we have a bow and arrow twist. So remember, keep your feet moving here. So we're gonna be starting feet about shoulder width apart. 
Coming up across, then lean away from yourself. Come back, open up your chest, lean to the other side and pull back again. So if you want to make this harder, you can start to really reach and then lean away from yourself. So you get a little bit of sneak in a side lunge there. These are the kinds of moves that feel really good after sitting at a desk all day. Keep it going. Under 10 seconds left. All right, so next up we have two high knee pulls plus a kick. So take a nice deep breath here. And here we go. So we're going knee, knee, and on that third one, it's a kick. So one, two, three. So you should be kicking on a different leg each time. So again, if your range of motion is different from mine, don't feel bad, just do what you can. If it's better than mine, good for you. Just make sure you're pushing yourself. Keep your core nice and tight. And if you need to hold on to something for balance, you can do that. Fifteen seconds left. Make sure you're not holding your breath. And make each of these motions strong. You don't want to be just flailing around. Make a count. All right, next up we have two side jacks plus a reverse lift. So, <clears throat> five seconds rest left. Here we go. So jumping jacks minus the jump. And then back and back. Show you this from the side. Lift and lift. And again, if you need something to hold on to for balance, be my guest. You can hold on right here or tap the wall if you need to. Again, if you want to make this harder, you can start to bend your knees more. So you start to make this a squat where you're just stepping out. Lift and lift. Really squeeze those glutes as you lift that leg behind yourself. You feel that in your butt and your thighs and your lower back. It'll be a small range of motion, so just make sure you're squeezing. All right, so those are down. So we have just two more exercises until we get a quick water break. So keep going if you can. So next up, we're doing a walk down plus a knee down. So come here, bend your knees if you need to to get your hands on the ground. You're going to walk yourself out. Once you're in a full push-up, bend your knees and pop back up. So if this is too difficult, um, like I said, you can bend your knees right here. Otherwise, if the whole thing, if your wrists hurt, or if you really just need a different starting place, feel free to just come here, do a calf raise, and then touch your toes, focusing on keeping a nice flat back as you come down. Move at whatever paces you need to. Otherwise, walk down, squeeze that core. 10 seconds left. All right, just one more, one more exercise and we get a quick break. So this time we're gonna be stepping out to the side, come up for a knee and then back out to the side. So coming here, knee, out and back. So here, knee, out and back. You can even turn it into a lunge if you want. It's all up to you. Keep it up, halfway done. You can even keep it uh, no bend at all if you like, no uh, deep range of motion at all. If you, wherever your starting place is, you have to respect it. Five seconds left. All right, so we have earned ourselves a quick water break. Whatever you do, don't sit down. Don't drink too much water. Save the heavy drinking for when you're done with your workout. And we'll be right back.
All right, guys, we are already halfway done with this routine, and we are starting back in with a basic squat plus a side leg lift. So again, you're using coordination, you're using balance, and you're working total control over your body. So you're doing a squat, and come up and lift to the side. So for your squat, you're sinking down, starting this motion in your hips, sink down, squeeze your glutes, come back up, and then lift up the other side. If you need to, you can keep it really shallow. So the point is you don't want your knees wobbling, you don't want to be rounding your back or your shoulders, you want to keep everything nice and flat. So if, if you can only go this deep, that's totally fine. And as you get more and more comfortable, start to go lower and lower. Again, you can hold on to something if you need help with balance here for this leg lift. Otherwise, uh, do the best that you can. Pull in your core, keep your eyesight up so that you don't start to round your shoulders. You want to be looking up the whole time. All right, so next up we have a forward step plus a press. And this is another one you can easily make more or less difficult. So we went reverse this last time, so we're working a different plane of motion. We're pushing forward and then pull back. Push forward, pretend like you're pushing a wall, and pull back. So if you want to make it harder, you can start to go deeper. So sink deeper and deeper as you get more comfortable, as long as that form is staying clean. Remember to just do what you can to push yourself. So a lot of these motions, even when you're just doing the easy version, you are working on building a base for harder exercises. So those really fun HIIT workouts, fun, and uh, strength training workouts, this is how you build yourself up to be able to do those things safely. So you cannot underestimate the importance of beginner workouts like this. All right, next up we're doing a side lunge plus, side lunge slides plus a uh, calf raise, if I can talk here. So you're gonna bend your knees slightly, tapping to the side, come back in and go up for a calf raise. Back down, bend your knees slightly, tap to the side, and come up for that calf raise. So just like with all the other exercises, you can go deeper if you like and make it a lot harder. Keep your back nice and flat. Otherwise, it's fine to just bend your knees slightly. You should still feel it. Engage your glutes, your thighs. Keep everything nice and tight. Just about 10 seconds left. You can pick up the pace if you like. Just depends on what kind of challenge you're looking for. All right, so next up we have a marching jack plus a touchdown. So this is another one that requires a little bit of coordination. So we're gonna be moving our arms up in a windmill. You're marching and then on the way back down, keep your back flat, touch your toes, come back up, start again. So again, you're just kind of building that mindfulness of keeping your posture good, building that range of motion so you can do harder workouts. And this is a good place to start for building endurance as well. And you don't have to listen to me the whole time. So once you get used to these motions, once you're comfortable, turn on some music that you enjoy, music that motivates you, and this workout will fly right by. Got about 10 seconds left. Keep it going. You can move faster if you like. All right, here's our 10 second break. So next up we have a uh, toe tap. So you tap ten, coming down and touching one toe plus a squat. So you come down and across, come back up and squat. So again here, you can go as shallow or as deep as you like with that squat. Just make sure your form is clean. Most of your weight should be in your heels and make sure that you squeeze on the way up. Really work those glutes. So again, you're also building flexibility here, range of motion. So these motions might feel relatively easy, but you're encouraging your body to be able to move fluidly through all these planes. Five seconds left. All right, next up we're dropping down to the floor. So we're gonna be doing a single leg push-up plus a child's pose. So, you can do the hard version if you like, a full push-up from your knees and your um, hands with that. Otherwise you come back or just pop up a leg. So you're alternating down, 
Come back, get a good stretch through your upper body and your back. Lean back forward, redistribute your weight to your hands. Pull in your core nice and tight and do that push up. Keep it going. Remember, you can stop and take a break anytime if you need to. Just try to keep it quick. Get right back into it as soon as you can. Alright, next up we're going to flip over. We're going to be doing a bridge plus a leg lift. So, flat on our back, feet flat on the ground. So we're pressing up through your heels. Squeeze, draw back down. Take one leg, bring it up. So this is kind of a stretch, it's a fluid stretch. Then place your foot back down, bridge, and then we're gonna repeat it on the opposite leg. So, like I said, you're gonna feel a stretch through the back of your leg here and your hamstring. So if your leg has to stop here, that's totally fine. If you want to, you can even bring it in and bend it if you like, but I recommend working on building flexibility there. So pull it back just as hard as you can, far as you can. No no bouncing, no forcing, you don't want to feel any pain. So when you squeeze up into this bridge, you should feel it through your butt, your thighs, and your lower back. Alright, so next up we have a cat, cow, bird, dog. So, lots of animals in here. <laughs> so, we're going to be coming up, stretch through your upper back, then go the opposite way, stick your butt out behind you. And come to the center and do a lift in each direction. So opposite hand, opposite foot. All right, do that again. Come up, stretch away from yourself in the opposite range of motion. Now those extensions. One and two. Just keep it going. Squeeze at the top of that range of motion. You should feel those muscles talking to you. All right, last one there. So next up we are doing a crunch plus a toe tap. So this is another sequence movement here. So you're gonna be doing a crunch up, then you bring your leg up, up, down, down. Then crunch again, start with the opposite leg. Up, up, down, down. So you're not bringing in your knee past your hip joint. So you should feel your core working right here. Focus on squeezing your belly button in towards the ground. Your back should be flat on the mat. And you're just building a good base of core strength here. And up. Alright, next up, our last one is a plank plus an arm hold. So we're going to be flipping over. This is another one you can do with your uh, full plank like this, or you can go from your knees. So do whatever you need to to challenge yourself. So you're going to be taking one hand and placing it behind your back for just a second hold. Bring it back down and replace it with the other. So make sure that you're not opening your body up. You want to keep your body facing the ground so you're working your core. You're really working that entire core. No cheating here. This is our last active interval. We've earned ourselves a cool down and stretch. Pulling your core. Just keep a straight line through your body. Make sure you're not sinking. Just a few seconds left. Alright, so go ahead and sink back into a child's pose. We'll do a quick cool down here. All right, now I'm going to sit up. And I like to stretch the front of my core. So I'm going to lean back in this hand, bring this other hand up, and lean back, bend my elbow if I want to go further. Just get it so you get a nice stretch through this side and through the front of your body here. Do some nice deep breaths. All right, switch sides. All right, 
right, now we're gonna come stand back up and stretch the front of our thighs, our quads here. So if you need to hold on to something for balance, go ahead and do that. Just feel it, feel the stretch through the front of your thigh. All right, switch sides. All right, now we're gonna do a wide toe touch, so feet a little wider than shoulder width apart, and you're just gonna come down as far as you can. If you, like whatever, wherever you have to stop is just fine. Make sure that you're not pushing yourself into any kind of pain. Should feel a little bit of tension, but never any pain while you're stretching. So just kind of move around through here. You can go from foot to foot and change the stretch. You can get a better oblique stretch if you come to one foot, and then walk over to the other. Otherwise, you should be feeling the stretch through your back and the backs of your thighs. All right, so we're gonna come up and stretch our hip flexors. So you're gonna step back with one foot, back or forward. So you should feel a stretch through this leg that is behind you, and then lean into it a little more and you can feel it through the calf of that same leg. Bring your arms up, and you can get a nice core stretch again. Make sure you're not letting your shoulders creep up towards your ears. You can lean into it a little bit, nice and gentle. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. Same thing on the opposite side. Right, now we're going to go for the inner thigh. So while we're here, you know, place one foot there and lean away from it. You should feel a stretch through your inside thigh here. Grab your arm and pull across your body. So you should feel a nice stretch through your triceps here. While we're here, focus on taking nice deep breaths. This is your time during the day. No emails, no phone calls, no work. Just take care of yourself. If we can't manage 20 minutes, 30 minutes of that a day, we're in trouble, you know? <laughs> All right, switch sides. All right, so we're gonna come back. We're gonna walk down towards our feet slowly. Walk ourselves out, bend your knees if you need to. Just take your time. And we're going to sink down and leave one of these feet up, rest the other foot on the ground, I'm going to do a calf stretch. So at this point you should be kind of pretending like you're trying to get your heel to rest on the ground. So just trying to achieve that movement will help you get a good um, calf stretch through the back of your leg here. Alright, go ahead and switch sides. So I'm going to sit uh, feet cross-legged, actually I'm going to put my feet together and then lean forward. So if you have to, you can put your feet out here, you should even feel a nice stretch still through your hips and then just lean forward a little bit. Get a stretch deep in those hips. All right, now you're gonna kick your feet right out in front of you and reach for your toes. So while you're stretching, your muscles will give you a little more room while you're holding that stretch. So it's, it's very good to take advantage of that and to press deeper into the stretch as you go. It's just really important that you do it without bouncing, without jerking, and like I said, no pain. There should be no pain involved. While I'm down here, I'm gonna tie my shoes so I don't break a leg. All right, there we go. So next up, I'm going to cross my legs and do just a little bit of a neck stretch. So I'm going to come back and forth here. This is just so we feel good for the rest of the day. Shake off any lingering tensions here. Side to side. 
Try to keep your shoulders black. Alright, now left to right. You can be doing this at any pace that you like. Nice deep breath while we're here. Alright, now I'm going to go draw a circle with my nose all the way around and then reverse that. Alright, a couple more of these. Alright guys, well, I feel nice and relaxed and we have just earned a workout complete. So, good job. I want to know what you thought of this workout. Uh, tell me, any feedback is always helpful. Otherwise, thank you for working out with me and come back and see me tomorrow. Bye guys.